You're listening to the Modern Vital Podcast, which explores the relationship between environmental factors and human health. Here is your host, Dr. Ben Reebs, founder of Portland Clinic of Natural Health and Modern Vital, elevating health and well being one journey at a time. Stay tuned for fun, practical, and thought provoking health tips, along with suggestions and insights into optimizing health and preventing chronic disease through integrative, naturopathic, and functional medicine approaches. Your body is unique, powerful, and intelligent. Your treatment should be too. On today's episode of the Modern Vital Podcast, we're going to talk a little bit about the neuroprotective action of one of my favorite supplements, resveratrol. Now, resveratrol is a type of antioxidant. We've talked about antioxidants a lot on this show. It has a chemical structure called a stilbean. We know resveratrol most famously for being present in red wine, but did you know that there's only about a milligram or so of resveratrol in a typical five ounce glass of red wine? So you'd have to drink about 50 glasses of red wine in order to get 50 milligrams of resveratrol. Hence, it'd be a lot better just to get it in supplement form. Uh, Just an FYI, resveratrol is abundant in uh, the grape skin as well as the grape seeds. Uh, and some berries like uh, blueberries, raspberries, mulberries, and it's even found in peanuts, a legume, of course. Anyway, resveratrol is also a polyphenol, a type of antioxidant that we have discussed uh, on the show quite a few times. Polyphenols are micronutrient compounds found in plants, uh, fruits, vegetables, teas, even spices. There are over 8,000 different types of uh, polyphenols. Uh, We think of like flavonoids, um, such as quercetin, uh, found in onions, berries, broccoli, uh, even citrus, uh, catechins, uh, which we we think of in green tea, uh, the most famous being uh, EGCG or epigallocatechin-3 gallate. Now, studies have found over the past decade or so that resveratrol appears to reduce age-related neurological disorders. Think of uh, macular degeneration, stroke, um, cognitive deficits. Apparently, resveratrol also has neuroprotective action with regard to toxicity. Uh, It can help uh, um, as a free radical scavenger. You know, we've talked about those free radicals uh, that can ping around and damage uh, proteins in the cells. Uh, Also, um, because of this protective capacity, Oxidative stress is lowered. The inflammation that promotes the oxidative stress is also um, dampened. And um, resveratrol has also been shown uh, in uh, mostly preclinical studies to help clear uh, beta amyloid, uh, which we know is a key feature of Alzheimer's disease. Now, much of these studies, as I mentioned, are preclinical findings, but they could help to improve patient outcomes as we apply uh, what we learn over time and as more studies come out in the coming decade or so. As naturopathic doctors, I think we should certainly consider adding resveratrol um, as a tool to our our growing toolbox or tool belt. Uh, For example, I use resveratrol often um, for its antifungal properties uh, to treat mold illness. Now, resveratrol has also been shown to have cardioprotective um, capacity, it's anti-carcinogenic, uh, and it's even been shown to be antiviral. And as I just mentioned, it has some antifungal properties as well. Now let's talk a little bit about Alzheimer's disease or AD. Uh, now more than 6 million Americans at the moment um, have AD or Alzheimer's uh, in the U.S. Uh, it's the most common cause of dementia uh, and cognitive impairment, and there's currently no treatment. Basically, uh, amyloid beta will build up uh, in the brain, uh, in uh, particularly uh, susceptible areas such as the hippocampus, and our Tau proteins will get phosphorylated, uh, contributing to what what are called these uh, neurofibrillary tangles. Uh, And then we get inflammation and oxidative stress, which ensues. Now we know that uh, Tau protein phosphorylation is a major contributor. Um, I just mentioned these uh, these tangles uh, that we see, um, and uh, you've probably seen them um, on imaging. We know that amyloid beta peptides or proteins 
also accumulate, uh, as mentioned, in important neurocognitive areas. And resveratrol has been shown to have the ability to minimize um, the aggregation or accumulation of these amyloid beta peptides, um, which are highly toxic to the hippocampus, uh, where uh, learning and memory are um, important activities that are attributed to uh, the hippocampus. Um, resveratrol has also been shown to stimulate the building of new neurons. Uh, we call this neurogenesis. Uh, and uh, as mentioned, to inhibit uh, the degeneration of the hippocampus. And um, the hippocampus is a pretty complex brain structure uh, that's fairly deeply embedded uh, in our temporal lobe. And as mentioned, it plays a huge role in learning and memory, which, which is why we see learning and memory um, begin to go south in Alzheimer's disease. Resveratrol's antioxidant effect has also been shown to promote um, neuronal development, uh, which we just mentioned, like we mentioned the neuro neurogenesis, uh, by activating what is called silent information regulator one, um, or known as CERT1. And CERT1 um, plays a protective role in the brain, protecting our brain from oxidative stress and its detrimental effects. Whereas Veritrol has also been shown to modulate um, a bunch of what are called effectors, uh, these, are, uh, these are inside of the cell. Um, these are um, signaling proteins, or uh, rather uh, messenger molecules that um, can increase or decrease certain activities, such as enzyme activity, uh, even gene expression, um, and most of all, cell signaling, as mentioned. Now, there are four effectors uh, in particular, um, which studies have shown get modulated by resveratrol. And these four respectively are oxidative stress, uh, or at least the areas that, that get affected are oxidative stress, neuronal energy homeostasis, uh, programmed cell death, also known as apoptosis, and longevity. Now, with regard to number one, oxidative stress, uh, we have um, an enzyme called heme oxygenase, or HO1, which uh, plays a protective role in inflammation. And what it does is uh, when our heme, um, which um, is a molecule that makes up hemoglobin in our red blood cells, when our heme uh, is uh, getting degraded and broken down into what are called bile pigments, uh, uh, HO1 is, uh, comes along and actually promotes this activity and turns, um, turns that broken heme molecule into carbon monoxide and iron. Now, another uh, example, um, and this is uh, the second one we mentioned um, regarding cellular energy in our neurons, uh, is an enzyme called AMP kinase, uh, which helps to activate glucose and uh, fatty acid uptake um, in our cells when our cellular energy is low. And this is particularly crucial in our brain. Our brain um, uses up at least a fifth or 20% of our energy every 24 hours. Uh, now, in some people, it's more than that, especially for those who are uh, more wired to use their brain a lot uh, during the day, maybe for work or just genetically. Uh, and so um, this is very significant uh, to our nervous system uh, to, to keep this AMP kinase intact and to keep it active uh, so that we can get energy when we're low. And uh, resveratrol plays a role in um, modulating this effector. Now, a third one, um, a third effector, uh, is uh, the area of programmed cell death or apoptosis. Uh, resveratrol has been shown to modulate um, a factor called AIF. Um, this is known as apoptosis inducing factor. And um, basically it's a protein that helps to trigger our, our uh, genetic material, particularly our chromatin, uh, to condense uh, and also um, uh, to, for our DNA to get fragmented. Um, in order to um, induce um, programmed cell death, which of course is an important process in our bodies uh, because then, then that um, cell dies and it can get cleaned up and removed and we can build new cells. And then finally, there's a fourth effector, um, and this is uh, in the area of longevity as mentioned. Uh, resveratrol has been found to modulate what are called sirtuins, 
uh, which are signaling proteins uh, heavily involved in metabolic regulation. They play a particularly uh, vital role um, in preserving our genomic integrity. Um, and uh, they've been found to be um, a pretty promising target in the anti-aging um, community uh, for, um, for reversing aging. Now, as you can probably see, resveratrol packs a lot of punch, uh, no pun intended. Um, we've just, um, just covered the surface of resveratrol. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we consider adding it um, as a tool to our toolbox um, as naturopathic and or functional medicine practitioners, uh, particularly um, in the treatment of complex chronic illness, uh, such as SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome, uh, where we often see mold illness and tick-borne illness overlaid um, or, or um, uh, active um, at the same time in the same patient. Um, and of course, that's my specialty, so I use res resveratrol often, and, um, and I see um, its benefit. That concludes today's episode of the Modern Vital Podcast. We'd really love to hear from you. We value your feedback. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to me at ben at modernvital.com. Also, feel free to leave us a review if you enjoyed this episode, and we look forward to having you join us next week for another exciting episode of the Modern Vital Podcast.